everyone, it's Tone back again with another video. Um, this time I'm just going to have a bit of a chit chat with you guys. Please excuse my um, tea sipping because I've actually got a very bad cold and I need to keep my throat um, lubricated. So yeah. Um, so this is a bit of a departure because I often get asked um, by people who don't read um, as frequently and they want to get into reading and they're looking for something that will kickstart them into reading. Um, so I thought I'd come here and just share a few ideas of things you could do to encourage reading more. Um, and that would kind of help you kind of develop your thirst and knowledge and enthusiasm for reading the way I do. So the first thing I would suggest is audiobooks. Now, audiobooks are absolutely brilliant because if you're not somebody that can sit down and actually read the written word or if you have things like dyslexia or um, a short attention span and stuff like that, or if you just don't, if you're just daunted by the thought of reading um, words on paper or on Kindle, um, audiobooks are absolutely brilliant for helping you overcome this. And I found that, especially when I'm ill or um, I, I, I'm distracted or I've got too much going on in my head, maybe I've got a, something going on at university that I have to focus on and I just haven't got the enthusiasm that I normally would have, um, I would turn to audiobooks. And also I turn to audiobooks as well. If I'm reading, because sometimes, not often, but sometimes I might be reading two or three books at the same time. Um, so I will turn to an audiobook as my third book or fourth book. Um, and because they help me kind of relax so these are audiobooks are something that you can listen to whilst you're cooking in the kitchen or whilst you're um before bed if you're kind of lying on your bed and you you're not you know you don't have a television in your room or something you can just listen to the audiobook and kind of just get drawn and engaged in the story i mean i tend to try not to listen to books in bed because i feel like they kind of keep my mind active and i can't fully relax and, and get back to sleep but some people find it really soothing and find that it helps lull them to sleep so but most definitely um if i'm cooking or if i'm at the gym or if i'm driving or something like that i will listen to an audiobook and audible on amazon is absolutely fantastic you can pay a subscription fee monthly i think it's like 8.99 or something like that um and um pretty much have access to download as many books as you want. You don't have to pay for the books because you're paying for the subscription. I think that's how it works because I'm not subscribed to Audible, but I will be soon. Um, and I find that um, that's absolutely brilliant. And also Audible um, oftentimes will give you a 30 day free trial or they might even give you a 90 day free trial. They've offered me a 90 day free trial um, in the past. So I would definitely recommend Audible. And also on YouTube, there is a plethora of audiobooks. So, you know, this might not be the most popular thing to say, but sometimes you can just type in the book that you're interested in reading um, and just type in the name of the book and the author and um, audiobook in YouTube and it might come up and you'll be able to sometimes it, it on youtube is broken into two parts um so it might be like nine hours in part one and another nine hours or five hours in part two audiobooks do tend to be quite long so you can't sit down for a nine hour stretch just like you probably wouldn't sit down for a full day stretch just reading a book except if you're me <laughs> and that you've got that kind of time to burn. But I understand the young parents might not have the time to burn like that. Um, so, you know, whilst you're doing things, you know, in the kitchen, at the gym, on the toilet, something like that, you can often, of course, or while you're having a soak in the bath, listen to an audiobook. So that is a very, very good way of getting introduced into reading. Another thing that I would suggest is um, if you 
can bear to read a, um, the written word, um, I would suggest starting with a novella. Now, a novella is a short story. So whilst a novel is quite thick and chunky and could have like five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred pages, whatever, a novella could have something as short as 50 to 150 pages, something like that. They are very short, they are very quick, they are very easy to digest and um, the stories, because the, the, the books are not very long, the stories are very, very fast paced. So they don't spend as long describing the environment and um, doing character development and stuff like that as a full novel will. So they just kind of get into the meat and potatoes of the story. Definitely, I would recommend a novella. Um, another thing that I would recommend, um, graphic novels. Um, I fell in love with reading because of graphic novels. Um, I used you know, mentioned in my introduction video that I used to read a lot of Archie, um, the Archie comic books, um, Betty and Veronica, Joghead, and all those kind of people, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So I really, really fell in love with graphic novels. And then as I got older, um, when I was about 13 or so, I got into the X-Men. I used to read a lot of uh, Marvel comic books. And even on Instagram, I follow Marvel. And a lot of the... Um, TV series that I watch tend to be Marvel and um, DC TV series because I like that kind of superhero kind of realm. So graphic novels um, are also a way to go. Like novellas, they have to capture your attention very, very early on. It is a picture book. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, some people say it's a glorified picture book, but if you're somebody that really wants to get into reading and you're struggling to, to get some momentum into it, I would really recommend graphic novels. Also, one of my cousins, my cousin Andrew, used to draw um, graphic novels when we were very, very young. I mean, I think we must have been about seven or eight. And he used to like draw these graphic novels and all the kids in the neighborhood were like really, really interested. And we used to kind of look forward to his next installment and stuff like that. And he stopped doing it. I don't know why he stopped doing it because he was so talented. Um, now he's like my IT Svengali um, that helps me with my YouTube channel and he, well, he's bigger than that actually. He works for like, you know, blue chip banks and stuff like that. He's a real high flying guy. But um, I would encourage him to pick that back up because that really helped a lot of us when we were young um, develop a love for reading, was kind of looking forward to his graphic novels. So that's something that you could also get into. Um, what else would I suggest? Um, I would also suggest, um, reading a book that you know there is a movie that has been made, like a movie ad adaptation has been made of it. Um, because I think it kind of helps you, if you're somebody that struggles with imagination. Now this for me, I can't, I, I'm not somebody like that because my own imagination is something wild. So even like calming it down is what I struggle with because I will imagine things that there is no way that the cinema or the movie can imagine it. But if you're somebody that has that problem um, of fostering an imagination, um, and you want to get into reading, but you, you just struggle with kind of picturing what the characters look like, what the setting is like, and things like that. I would suggest getting a book that you know has been adapted into a movie. Something like The Hunger Games, or The Twilight Saga, or Me Before You, or The Time Traveler's Wife. Something like that. Just some recommendations for you guys, where you can watch the movie first, so therefore the characters are set in your mind. You already kind of know where the story is going and then you can read the book along with the movie. So, um, or you can read the book after the movie. If you want to read the book along with the movie, I would suggest kind of breaking the movie into chunks. So you can um, watch the first 15 to 20 minutes of the movie and read five chapters in the book. So that way you've already kind of know what's going on. You can kind of um, read enough to kind of know what's gonna happen after the 25 minutes you've watched in the movie. 
and then you know that way you can kind of you know kind of go along with it maybe not five chapters you might need something like seven eight nine ten something like that depending on how long the movie is um but i would suggest that that really might help with people that struggle with imagination is read books that there is has been adapted into a movie and kind of try and read and watch simultaneously or read the book first and then watch the movie immediately after so that way you know what's already coming but um or vice versa whichever what works best for you um you know so that way it kind of kind of softens the blow a little bit and kind of eases you into um developing a healthy reading appetite so to speak um what else would i suggest um, there was something else i was gonna suggest but i can't Oh yes, read fairy tales. I've just done a video on um, fairy tales for traditional fairy tales for children. And some of those traditional fairy tales, although they're for children, as we all know, the fairy tales that we grew up with, things written by the Brothers Grimm, Rapunzel, Rumpelstiltskin, Cinderella, um, things written by Hans Christian Andersen, um, things like Beauty and the Beast, um, the Pied Piper, etc., etc. Those are really, really dark tales. So, although they are children's stories, they are very, very dark tales. So, as an adult, you can kind of download um, the Grimm stories, which is free on Amazon. And a lot of those books are, are free, by the way. And, um, you know, you already kind of know the story from your childhood or there might be some fairy tales that you come across that you didn't know from your childhood read those they kind of because they're short they're punchy they're very interesting they transport you into a different realm they're written from from a different time and era so the pers is, is perspectives and and the setting is is something that is old so that might be very, very interesting to you guys and a very nice way to kind of get into reading because it's familiar ground. You know, you grew up with these stories or you've heard about these stories or you've seen it in Disney, something like that. So I would suggest, yeah, read fairy tales. And lastly, pick up free books on Amazon. I mean, free eBooks. We've all got smart devices these days. You know, we can all download the Kindle app onto our phones or smart tablets or iPads or, you know, whatever device you've got. So there is a plethora of free books on the Kindle um, that you can download and start reading. So if money is something that you worry about in terms of getting involved in investing in books, download free books from, from Amazon, um, Barnes & Noble and places like that or their um their epub hub other sites um and again you know the the audiobooks on on youtube are also free so i hope this is helpful and i hope that this kind of helps encourage you guys to ease your way into reading if you're struggling with that Please let me know your comments down below. Let me know if you've taken up any of these suggestions and you found them helpful or if, you, if you're already doing this or if you have suggestions for other people um, that, that I've not covered, please leave your comments down below because sharing is caring. So yeah, like, share and subscribe. Please follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm Toyin Afalabi hyphen Ogunbi everywhere. My Twitter handle is Toyin419 12517. And until next time, bye.